Hey, it's Mark from the Art Cabana. Today I want to show you how to paint this oil painting. Uh, it's got an acrylic background, so it's technically a mixed media painting, but uh, it's not as difficult as it looks. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to get glow in the moon, a nice uh, sea foam washing up ashore, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you for tuning in, and here we go. So this is the mixed media painting that we're going to be doing today. There's some simple but effective techniques that you can use to make things just a little bit easier for yourself. The first thing is this. You probably noticed that that's not a white canvas. It's yellow acrylic on a white canvas. And then this is white acrylic to form a moon shape that's just going to help us to uh, sit right back behind the oil paints, which we're going to jump into right now. And I've also set us up with a medium that happens right here on the top and a piece of tape just to keep things kind of neat for now. This medium that I use is actually one that I mix myself. It's got uh, one third paint thinner, one third linseed oil, and one third Gamsol. But you can use liquid clear if you prefer. Now I'm going to start out with our fan brush. And our fan brush is going to be used to paint the first set of clouds in the sky here. Okay. This is cad yellow medium. I'm going to load it up pretty good on both sides and I'm going to push into the pile. When I pull it down, I'm just going to push right back into it to make sure that it's all loaded up into the bristles. Now let's start right here where the color is going to be the most pure. I'm just making these swiveling motions with my hand. Kind of like a figure eight, and then I just feather out on the sides. And if you wanted to cover more ground, you could switch to a different brush, which I like to encourage experimentation with brushes, with pigments. And so we already have some on there, but I'm just going to load up a little bit more. If you like that fan brush, you can stay with it, but I like to give you options. So let's. Let's cover a little bit more ground more quickly over here where there's not as much visual interest. We're just going to blend out a little bit. Okay, I'm moving right along here. I'm going to start to go into the less saturated color. So I started out with the most one. That way we can, we can leave it nice and pure. And we're going to start to go to a uh, more neutral tone. Let's kind of give ourselves a boost of confidence here just by going over to that edge, starting there. Now there's the most forgiveness over there because like I said, we're going to blend it out. And we can also learn exactly how dark this color is before we march over here. And I think when I swap, uh, I think when we switch back over there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move back to the fan, the, I'm going to move back to the fan brush when we move over here. Now we're looking at sort of an orange sky. The moon's sitting back behind some clouds. We're going to give that a little bit of a glow later. But uh, let's try. That was our burnt sienna. This is our Van Dyke brown. We're going to go into our Van Dyke brown. We're going to go back up into the corners here. See that? It's less saturated. That'll be good for these upper corners here. If you start to stay away from that moon with these colors, what you're going to find is it starts to appear to have a glow. And it's a nice saturated yellowish orange sort of glow. Okay, I want to just switch over to my fan brush. I'm going to switch over to my fan brush now. And what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to keep that brush with that yellow on there. Some of that Van Dyke brown. And these shapes, 
and I'm applying this, uh, using a semicircle sort of shape, just swooping right over the top, pushing my way over. Just like before. What I'm doing, up on these areas, I'm just doing a little bit more of a blend. Doing a little bit more of a blend so that they sit off and don't bring your attention. You don't you want your attention to be over here in this painting. Sometimes I do well. Uh, sort of spider walk this, this fan brush across the canvas and you get sort of wispy shapes but you want to do that when there's not much paint on your brush at least to start out with and once you get the confidence you can kind of work your way into it a little bit I want to give the clouds a little bit of extra dimension I'm gonna push with the two inch brush I'm just gonna tap at the bottom of these at first Do a little bit of additional blending over here. Pick up some of that paint. Gonna pick up some of that paint and drop it into some of those areas. And then those wispy clouds that we did with the fan brush, we can just kind of tap those out a little bit so that they're very, very, very subtle. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is we want to do a blend right across the bottom here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start to work our way up. So before you do this, before you go to get the brush strokes out, you should take your brush, clean it off a little bit, I'm not going to encourage you to use a paint thinner yet because you don't want a soaking wet brush to do this. You want a nice dry brush. As long as you've cleaned off some of that excess paint, you go across very, very lightly. This is my favorite part. My favorite part is taking the tape off. You get this, this nice, crisp, clean line. Totally effortlessly. The next thing we want to do is we want to give a little bit of a glow to this moon. So I've taken a little bit of titanium white, and I uh, and I went. When I say a small amount, it's it's very small. Like you just you don't load up your paint. I'm just gonna start here in the middle, crisscross brush strokes, and just barely start to work our way outside of that. We might need to get a little bit more. And that's why we try not to paint too much of those neutral colors into this center. We want to keep it really pure. If everything went well, you should still be able to see the shape of that acrylic white the moon that sits right underneath that oil paint. If you do start to pick up too much of this color, just wipe out the bristles of your brush and go back. Start with a small amount of that titanium white. And continue to do those crisscross brush strokes. The next thing that we want to do is we want to get the background C color. Generally speaking, we like to work our way from back to front. From back to front, that way we can paint over what's there and it's easier to do an additive process than a, than a subtractive process. Because once it's there, it's there and it's very tough to get rid of. So, let's work on that C color. We're going to take Viridian. We're going to take sap green, and we're going to take Prussian blue. We're going to mix those all together. It's very dark. It looks almost black on there. So let's take a little bit of white. Now that color starts to reveal itself. Okay, 
I want to add a little bit more blue to this. I'm just using a round brush. You bring it to a nice blade by running both sides through it. That way you get it nice and sharp. Come up here to the horizon line. You take a very deep breath. And then you just start to paint as you breathe out. I'm just using this same exact brush to block in this color, mostly straight across. We're going to go at the top. Straight across at the top. I'm trying to do a little bit more of a blend where we put on that initial line. Over here, I'm just going to pull some of this down to prepare us for when we have that crashing part. And let's add in a little bit more of that C color in rough little patches here so that it looks like there's some rippling effect on the water. So what I'd really rather not do is fly blind. I'd like to have some guidelines. And when I put the new coat of the medium down, uh, I got rid of some of those chalk lines. So I really want to just take thinned out white paint. You can thin this out with your medium too. Just use a little bit, uh, not quite an inky consistency. It's just thin, just a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and draw some of those lines back in here. What I'm doing now is I'm using the round brush to just put in a little bit of shadow. I'm starting out the shadow with the same color that we used for the C. So I'm keeping it a little bit uh, simpler, or at least I'm trying to, saving us the effort of mixing up new paint. And this brush stroke, your hand just swivels on the top of your wrist. That's how you get that feathered out, um, that feathered out brush stroke. And I'm going to go back and hit the middle of this once more with that same color. We're in good shape here, but at the top, you might want to do a little bit of a lift here. See, I'm just lifting that brush. And because there's so many bristles in here, it's a way of just softening that up. I'm going to show you one more thing. After we do this, every once in a while you might have to go back and just wipe that out. Start with a clean brush. Again, we're going to hit the tops here. This is the eye of the wave, so it's going to remain pretty saturated yellow. It's going to be kind of the sky color. Okay, now. What we want to do next is the same sort of thing that we did when we wanted to get rid of the brush strokes in the sky. Horizontally. Very, very, very light touch right across just like this. It's obviously looking still a little bit rough, right? A lot of people get discouraged at this point. They think that it should be absolutely perfect the whole way through. But it comes in layers and you have to accept that for a little while it's just going to look a little bit rough. There's not much dimension here. It looks very flat still, and uh, you can't quite make out what's happening. It starts to come into focus as we add more color. What I'm going to do now is with that, uh, with that same round brush, I'm going to grab a little bit of this black paint, a little bit of that C color. What you got to do is kind of start small. So down here in the middle, let's just have a line that reaches the whole way across. You want to be very, um, very careful with it. You don't want to apply it too liberally because if you do, 
your paint, you're going to see that the brush strokes a lot more. Uh, the texture is going to look off. Your blends are going to happen very strangely. So you want to you want to be aware of that. So now I'm going to take the one inch brush once more, and I'm just going to do a little bit of a lift here, very slight lift. bit by bit this comes together. Next up we want to get some of this sand color. There's a little bit of water sitting over top of it so it's not going to be as pure as the color down here but nonetheless all this is roughly going to be the same color so what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to take a little bit of the cad yellow medium. I'm going to take a little bit of the burnt sienna. I'm also going to take a touch of a Van Dyke Brown. And I'm going to see what that gives us here. Let's start down here. Just kind of trace that line. See if you, you like it. This is kind of uh, an opportunity to change things up. If you, don't, uh, if you don't like the way it looks, you can always change its shape. But I'm more or less just blocking this color in here. down in this corner, down in this corner, a little bit heavier on the Van Dyke Brown. And that will help us match what we had going on in the corners with a really nice vignette effect. If you wanted it to be nice and smooth, what you could do is just you take a, a two inch brush and just kind of brush right back over it which I probably will do. I don't really want a whole lot of texture. So let's, uh, let's take a look and see how that goes if we do that. You take a one inch brush too, it doesn't really matter. I start here over the edge, just lightly go across. There we go. And I want to keep this same color, but I also want to add uh, a tint to it. So for what's sitting underneath here, I don't want it to be that, that pure color. I want it to be a little bit dulled down. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm still just scribbling this in here. Okay, let me just wipe that out. Get this brush. And just kind of keep going back and forth and cleaning it a little bit until you bring that down. And you see already, it's starting to fix itself here. Before I go too much. Before I go much further, I did want to take a, a, just a second to point out, I cheated a little bit off camera. Uh, I darkened this a little bit just to give it a little bit more oomph. This is the foreground, so it has to have a little bit more contrast. I'm actually going to switch to a square brush. Um, I'm, to start out here, just going to tap into a very, very small amount of white paint. Gonna come up here. And I'm going to do these swoops, and I'm not going to do them um, side by side. I'm going to leave little spaces in between. Maybe up top here, do the same thing.
very, very light amount of white paint here. Let me go over here, I'm going to do the same thing. Now here, this wave is pushing over, so I put a little bit of extra uh, black paint underneath there, ivory black, and I'm just, to get this effect with this white paint, dirty brush, I'm giving a tiny twist. Keep, keep doing that there. I'm just going to scribble this brush all around down here, maybe do a little bit of pushing even into some of that black. And it's not quite a blend. It's a very tiny blend, very tiny blend. Over here, toward the side, this is going to come as no surprise if you've seen what I've done so far, but I'm going to just make it a little bit darker. Okay. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to get some of the sea foam that is splashing up here. Uh, I cleaned off my fan brush, and clean out your fan brush really well before you do this. Okay, I want to show you something up close here. You see how you take that, you just kind of tap it around there. This is the effect that you want on the canvas, and you can kind of experiment on your easel before you take it up to the canvas. So here we go. Start small. Always start small so you can build your confidence. And there you go. This is the effect that you want. You're probably going to have to, if you want very crisp, um, very very crisp texture here, what you're going to do is load your brush a lot. You're going to go through a lot of paint, but the effect is going to be worth it for sure, and I think you'll see that. And it's okay to, to start down here in the bottom. If you want to avoid repeating patterns, and you should, what you can do is apply it with the one corner and then go back with the clean corner and just kind of push a little bit more, get a nice blend there. You'll notice how very much I'm blending around this area because I want to get rid of that, that background line. I'm going to come back up here. This is the part where you really want to clean up that green when you get it in there. And just go back regularly. Nice, clean white paint. Things are starting to come into focus now, but we want a little bit more contrast up front. So I'm going to fall back on the trusty liner brush and uh, I'm going to use pure titanium white paint with a little bit of medium. There's a little bit of medium in there. Doesn't make it runny, but just thins it out so you can come up here and drop in a very nice highlight line. You're going, to get, you're going to want to go back and clean out your brush because you're almost certainly going to pick up some of that green color. Right around the top here, we just do some more swooping motions. I want to do a couple more up here. See that? Start at the top and then just bring it down.
can also take a second if you did like I did, got rid of these lines. You might have to add a little bit more thinner, but you come back down here, just add them right back in. Generally speaking, the perspective is telling me that the further away those lines are, the flatter they are. And then as they come towards me, that's where I'm standing over them and I can see they start to curve a little bit more. And that just curves right off the bottom there. There, That's actually looking pretty good. And um, one sort of, I'd say, advanced technique that we do when we're doing waves is the sea foam that happens up here. And it's a big decision making part. So don't beat yourself up if you can't get it right away. But the idea is you want to thin this out and um, maybe you even want to add a little bit of that sky color in here just to make it a little bit shadowy and not so stark white because after all it is sitting right underneath here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going back here. You see the way that that, that curves along with the way that the, that the wave goes. See how I'm twisting my brush every so often when I do this? You'd never notice, but it kind of gives it a sharp edge on either side. Think about how you want to make a, a variety of line widths on this one. For the sea foam that happens outside of this area, uh, it's going to be just a tiny bit brighter. The sun is hitting it. Uh, it's out of the shadow, so this is going to be a little bit more pure white and some medium. And it's also worth noting that after it gets out of this curve, it starts to go straight. It's more or less at this point straight across because again that's what the perspective is telling us. When I go back in I just kind of run my brush through some of these areas just to um, just to fade it a little bit, not much. And I'm even, I'm not just using the, the top of the brush. I'm just kind of using the body of the, the bristles. Breaking it up just a little bit. So let's, uh, let's now move on to the palette knife. What you want to do is Get some pure white there, flatten it out, and um, if you're using a sharp palette knife, the way you want to do this is if you're trying to get the top of something, you're going to use the top side of that knife, and if it's uh, on the bottom side, just the opposite. The first place that I want to get a highlight on is up here. Now this is going to be kind of tough because we've already used a medium to thin that out. So it can be tough to stick on there, but if you apply it generously and just kind of let off the pressure, if you let off the pressure, it should just break off just like that. That's perfect, that's exactly what we want. And I wanna do a little bit over here on this side as well. Again, you 
just let it break right off there. Essentially what you're doing is you're giving yourself a little bit of texture here as well. What you want to do is you want to get yourself a very thin puddle of paint here. Wipe off any excess here and you go into that puddle, you cut across and then you just sharpen it out like that and you get a roll of paint that is nice and pristine and the way that you could do this is you can now see where that's going to hit and you just right along the side there. Gives it Gives it more dimension. Okay. If you uh, if you need to, you can use the small side of this blade as well. Gives you a degree of control that you don't have. The broadside. Very, very light touch. Now you hear this scraping, but ultimately at first, you don't want to scrape at all. You just want to let it slide right off of that. So let's go back to the other side, try to get a little bit more paint here. You can get it this way as well. But one important thing is you just want to make sure that these are mostly sideways here. There we go. I'm putting in a new line there. this to be a little bit darker so I'm going to take uh, burnt sienna and black I'm going to dial it back just a little bit So as it goes off the canvas, it doesn't draw all of our attention over there. We're going to thin out a little bit of black paint, maybe a little bit of Van Dyke Brown as well. Nice and dark there. The final bit of contrast that we really need sits right underneath is way up front. I try to not make it the same line width. I like a little bit of variety here. So, there we go. Get up here as well. Up here, try to go a little bit thinner. It's further away, you're not going to see quite as much. So there you have your mixed media, acrylic and oil, but mostly oil beach scene with your warm colors and your cool colors. It's a great one. Uh, it's nice contrast and it's pretty easy to do. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.